think we did anything different. Okay. Well, there we go. There we are. And we're active. Yay. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> oh, I got to click the go live. Look like okay. you're ready. Click here to start streaming. Ready. Okay. Yay. <laughs> that was super frustrating. So we're a little late. Yeah. Sorry about that. But um, we finally made it. We're trying something a little bit new, so we're having a little bit of technical difficulties there. But we're super excited about this new kind of thing we got going. So we got some streaming software, so we can show you guys some pictures and videos while we're explaining some things. And hopefully it'll be a little bit more informative for you guys, so you can see some visuals instead Yay. of just, you know, us talking. Okay, so today we're going to talk about the Flow Hive. Uh, hopefully you know that already because you saw the title of the video, but, um, <laughs> we have, <laughs> Whoops. so we have a flow hive, uh, that was actually the first hive that we purchased, uh, in our first year. We were super excited about it. Mike came home and was telling me about it and that's kind of what got him, you know, put the bug in his ear, pun intended. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the first one. Uh, our first year, we couldn't really get it going. We weren't really sure what we were doing, but we knew that uh, people see the flow hive and they're like, easy way to get honey. But you still have to check on your bees. So don't forget to check on your bees because they need to be healthy in order for them to make honey and especially in order for you to get honey from them. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Just... Okay, I'm just oh, yeah. keep going. No, no, no. Uh, okay. That's that's my part. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> so I just wanted to talk about uh, a little bit of history of the Flow Hive that I know of. Um, I was supposed to do research before we came on. Didn't do it because <laughs> I got I got really busy with work. I find out that tomorrow I'm I'm leaving for California. So I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. But the Flow Hive, from what I understood, I was I was at work with. A friend of mine and we were standing you know 12 hour night watch and he goes look at this cool thing it's flow hive and all you got to do is put the box on and then the bees will put honey in it and you use a key and you open it and it gives you honey and you don't have to open the box or do anything else um so that was that was kind of interesting to me i looked at it more i told my buddy hey maybe i'll get into bees and he kind of gave me that like <laughs> Don't, no, you can't. Don't do that. So we, uh, we talked about it a lot more that night after, after that. And then I came home and I, I told Lisa right as she was going to work and I was coming to bed. And she said, uh-uh. Yeah. But I had agreed that we were going to get chickens and a dog and mm -hmm. other things. So she was yeah. going to be a little flexible and let me get some, some bees. And I did. Yep. And now I'm happy I did because I love the bees too. Well, after she said yes, then we <laughs> talked about the price. Now the, the price of a, a flow hive today, because this is the next generation, the one that you're seeing on the screen here you gotta hit is... Did not come with that and the, yeah. the little platform to keep your your jars on yeah I so i mean it's nice but let's get back to reality because that's <laughs> that's a high cost and yes. if you're a beginner i would shy away from that i want to put that stamp on there shy away from doing it don't spend that money until you know what you're doing because our first year the bees didn't even take to it they didn't care about the flow they didn't care about the plastic yeah. and we didn't know any better so what we could have done better was gotten with a, a beekeeper who had had a flow hive, learn to wax the actual frames that are in there. You got to wax them really good and then the bees will be attracted to it. We did it kind of a natural way where we just kept putting it on and putting it on and 
Eventually, it started smelling like bees. The bees started putting some wax in it. But, I mean, it took a year or two before, like, really they, they started taking to it. So, and we switched back. So, let's see if I can do this now. <laughs> but, this year, we got to take our own picture and those, like, cool little things of, you know, the... the um, I didn't even realize there was a bee on, on that right there. Oh, yeah. It's, <laughs> on, the, just now. it's on the outside of the... The plastic there. That's funny. Um, okay, here we go. Hello from Florida. There we Hi. go. Hi. You know what? I'm going to be better here. I'm going to put you up there in the chat. Hold on one second. If you want to keep talking. I'll okay. Talk. Yeah, so uh, if you'll notice in the picture, we have, it, it doesn't really look like anything, but that's saran wrap. Um, and when we did the harvest, we covered the tube and the bottle so no beast could get into the flow stream as it's coming out of the tube and going into the bottle so that was a obviously we don't want bees in our honey you know in the bottles that we're going to be selling but also you know for their protection we don't want them drowning in honey um, so we do put a little bit of saran wrap all around it so we don't have to worry about that i don't know if y'all can see that but i just put the chat on the screen i don't oh, know yay. why that excites me but so it's us in one corner, and it should be the chat in the other one. So if you say anything, hello, whatever, <laughs> uh, keep it PC, but <laughs> yeah. you'll be up there. You'll be famous. So Henry, do you have a flow hive, or are you interested in one maybe? Or are you just curious about other people's um, experiences? That's a good question. Let me see. Can I close this? Uh, let me see Boom, this. there we okay. go. And we, so, yeah. Do you want to keep going, or do you want me to just keep going? Uh, no, no. So what we're going to do is we'll, um, we'll just keep looking at the pictures for now and we'll kind of talk about that. And then we actually have a video that we're going to play that kind of takes you from how I got from point A of figuring out it's time to harvest to getting to, uh, basically labeling and whatnot. Yeah. So, uh, just to go through the pictures, this is what happened when I went to harvest I walked out there and I saw a whole group of bees on the front of the hive and ignore the ones up at the top, this picture that was a little bit later, but this is kind of a sign of swarming and swarming tendencies. So I, I started looking into the, the flow hive to see, hey, are they actually still putting nectar in or are they starting to take everything back out? And they were starting to chew it out a little bit and I thought, hey, I'm going to go ahead and just harvest what I can and maybe they'll slow down the swarm tendency and, then... and this is our friend he uh, we invited him over to you know help extract he had never even been around bees before so there he is just like getting his own free bottle so what we did is said hey if you come over and help us bottle a bunch of honey then we'll give you one for free and it seemed like a, a good trade-off yeah and he was a little bit nervous of course because yeah. he like he said he'd never been around bees and he's like why don't you slide it on my hand why don't you slide it on my hand what do i do i was like you don't do anything she's fine yeah. she'll she'll just chill for a minute and then she'll fly away and and he didn't he didn't flinch or anything he didn't move and he was totally fine nobody got stung so yeah and he was super excited to get that free bottle of honey afterwards and I'm going to tell you right now, you will never get the freshest honey as you do. Like, unless you're like getting a spoon straight in the hive or getting your finger right in the hive, like that same kind of deal. But mm -hmm. freshest honey straight from the hive, right into your mouth. So good. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yeah. And he, uh, he really enjoyed himself. I, I picked up a drone just to kind of mess with him. <laughs> yeah. And I, I was like, here, hold this guy. And he's like, he's going to sting me. And I was like, no, no, no. He, he doesn't sting. He doesn't have a stinger. So, he, was so, he was blown away by that, I think. Yeah. And then it was like his his friend. He wanted. He was like, hey, and I don't want to step on him. So if he flies off, like, cool. But if he falls on the ground, I got to pick him up and move him. Well, like, what, was, what was great, I thought, too, is that after we finished harvesting the honey that we were doing, he took, Mike took him over to our war a hive and was like, oh, you want to actually see some, like, really get into there and see some bees and he ended up holding a frame of bees by the end of the day mm -hmm. it was pretty cool 
It was awesome. Yeah. Let me uh, let me do that browser yeah. thing again, and we'll we'll put it. So if anybody has questions during the, the oh cool little video, okay, we can throw it up there. Uh, he said he had one, but got oh burnt, got burnt on fire. Can't fire. Find them. They are pricey. Man. That is for sure, and I'm sorry to hear that. That's awful. Yeah. Mm. Oof. All right. Let's mm. see if we can put up this video. So I think we're gonna lose our mic. Okay. This is the frame from the third position. Whoops, there we go. Oh, they are pricey, that is for sure. And I'm sorry to hear that, that's awful. All right, so All right. that's the other stand. Put up this video. Looking here, so I pulled out this one, I completely capped top to bottom. Okay. This is the this frame. one. Was it this one? It was this one I pulled out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was that one I pulled out. And that one's uh, pretty much capped top to bottom. There's like a sliver at the bottom that's not done. And then uh, I didn't look at the rest because after checking right. the edge so, in the center there, that's the other. And stand. then I can look in the window. Looking here, I pulled out. I'm this just gonna one. say it is rich. Completely capped, top to bottom. Okay. This is the this frame. one. Was it this one? It was this one I pulled out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was that one I pulled out. And that one's uh, pretty much capped top to bottom. There's like a sliver at the bottom that's not done. And then uh, I didn't look at the rest because after checking right. the edge so, in the center there, that's the other. And stand. then I can look in the window. Looking here, I pulled out. I'm this just gonna one. say it is rich. Completely capped. Bottom. Okay. This is the this frame. one we extracted this from this one? frame this one I pulled out two days ago, and as you can see, yeah, I'm pretty sure the bees that one I pulled are out. already. And that one's uh, they decapped it top to bottom. There's like and they're a in there at the bottom that's not done. filling it back with honey. Look at and that. And uh, I didn't look at the rest because we're gonna take a couple more today. Checking right. the edge so, in the center there. That's the other. And stand. then I can look in the from window. One, Looking here, two, I pulled out. I'm just gonna one, say three, it is red completely capped. So that's five frames I have left. This one, we extract. Don't think I'm going to be super greedy and take all of them. Two days ago, we'll see. I mean, there's still a flow on, and it's currently middle of May, and our flow ends. Okay, so I I brought us back because I I started to hear that the videos were like just looping and looping and looping, but you were seeing like newer videos pop up. It's kind of weird. I'll work on that, but it. It's pretty awesome when you you are able to pull out that flow frame finally and, and see everything capped over. Yeah. And and then the other cool thing that I didn't know last year, but don't trust that window. The the <laughs> one that, that's closest to you, you're like, oh, they got something in there. Oh, they don't. Um, yeah, that'll lie to you all day. <laughs> Because the whole last year, the whole frame was capped except for that one row right next to the window. And I thought I thought they weren't using it at all. And then I got ready to go ahead and harvest. And then they, they swarmed and took most of the honey anyway. So I was like, okay, well, next year it'll be a thing. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so some pros and cons. Obviously, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of sucks. But there are some other options. You can purchase the frame separately and modify a box, or you don't even technically have to modify a box. If you're gonna take the frames out because you're looking at them anyway, mm -hmm. you can just take the frame out, take it into your honey shed or your kitchen or whatever, and extract it at that point inside. Uh, obviously, you'd have to get the bees off first, just like you would uh, any other kind of extraction. Mm -hmm. So that is another option. But you can modify a box if you are at least somewhat handy with tools. Um, and there's yeah. links out there, videos probably also for how to do that. Yep. Um, we do not personally have one. So, no. sorry about that. Um, but some pros, obviously it is super easy once those honey frames are filled up to just turn that key, open it up, and let the honey flow out. <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> and it's super cool to watch. Well, super and, cool. and if you step back a little bit, another pro to it, if you're in the U.S. and use Langstroth or anywhere and use Langstroth, mm-hmm. is the dimensions of the Flow Hive does fit your 8 frame or your 10 frame. Yeah, and you can get either one. So. Yeah. And they also offer a hybrid system, which mm-hmm. we actually have one. Yep. And it has a couple of frames of the flow frames in the middle, and then a couple of standard Langstroth, like regular wooden frames yep. on the outsides. And I, I like that idea a little bit better because then you can take some already pulled out frames yeah. and put them up there. So uh, if you're looking to kind of kickstart your flow hive, that would that would be one of the two things I would mm-hmm. do. The other one, of course, is wax the, the plastic really good because, yeah. man, that, that sucked having it for a year or two before... Mm-hmm the bees even really got on there i mean you'd see them in the window walking on there but they weren't doing anything another option you could do is take a already drawn out honey filled or at least partially filled super and put it on top of the flow frames and that way it'll kind of entice the bees to come up in it to get to the honey yep and what that does is them walking over the the flow hive comb Mm -hmm puts their scent everywhere because remember we operate off of pheromones as bees <laughs> we. <Yeah>. and <laughs> and that's that's what they're looking for they're, you're trying to get rid of the plasticky smell and, and cover it with the bee smell and then they kind of take to it a little bit better but if you wax it like that already gives them kind of their own scent yeah you know yeah, their own homely sure. feeling for sure but if you're brand new to beekeeping and it's your first time you don't really have Wax, unless you can buy it or get it from a friend, another beekeeper maybe. Yep. So that that's the strong point about having a mentor. Um, go to your local association or your beekeeping club, whatever you guys call it in your yeah. area, and just try and find somebody that will mentor you. If they're open enough to, you know, helping you with a flow hive, cool. But if if they're not, you can always say, hey, I just need some wax, and then just wax your flow hive a little bit. Yeah. Uh, not everybody's open to a flow hive. We honestly, we bought it, so we're using it. You yeah. know, and <laughs> we're not going to waste that money. <laughs> yeah, and we're not going to sell it or anything. No. It, it's going to be something that we're going to use, and we got to figure out how to use it. And right. we have finally, yeah, figured out well, how to use it. That's that's one of our things, though. We we want to try new things and different techniques and mm-hmm. different ways of beekeeping. And obviously, we have three. Well, if you count the flow hive, four different kinds of of hives at this point well it that's a super it's a i know it's a super, super but so. i'm just it, like it's a little bit different still yeah. that's what i'm saying so but, um but at the end of the day if you have any questions and you're in the north carolina area or anywhere really close that has the same sort of temperature and weather that we have mm-hmm. just shoot us an email or put something in the chat that says hey i got a question about how does this work or that work yeah. Um, we'll answer as best we can. <laughs> yeah. One of the, one of the cons that I I can think of right now is when I put that key in, which is a um, it's that metal uh, piece that goes across the top, and then you you leverage, um, and and it opens up your flow hive. That sometimes when you turn that key, it sounds like everything popped up and you're good, but then once you let the key down, it pops back down and it closes again. So what what i was doing was i would i would open it and then open it on both ends and in the middle and just double check and then when i slide the tool in and out i just make sure that there's no resistance which which turned out okay now if you do decide hey i'm just going to crack a little bit at a time and extract remember that when you when you crack the flow hive in the segments that it that it's in because that whole that whole frame is just a bunch of different segments that are put together and you can crack little bits at a time but when you do that the bit that you didn't crack there's now part of a frame that's now leaking honey and that it's leaking over the top of your flow hive and down into the bees so you can crack a little as you go but go ahead and crack everything if you're going to do it yeah and make sure you have plenty of bottles ready so more than you think that you're going to need just in case because once it starts going there's there's no stop there's no pause button Mm -hmm. um so definitely have extra bottles ready to go and prep everything ahead of time as much as possible so have your beat or have your bottles ready have your saran wrap ready if you're going to use that have your your little tubes ready um have 
episodes have um let's see what else do we have we had the key the bottles mm-hmm. the tubes just a rain wrap i guess that's really it huh or your your hive jacket if you are concerned at all about the bees we, they didn't really mess with us i had one kind of buzzing around a little bit but it wasn't that's normal for me i don't think they even did anything to you or or to our friend who was out there um nobody with i wasn't even wearing gloves uh, nobody was wearing gloves so we didn't we didn't have any issues but it was more of a precaution than anything um, but definitely have everything prepped and ready beforehand and don't leave anything out there as soon as you're done and you close it up and put it back together take it away immediately because those tubes are going to have residual honey in it and maybe you dropped a little on on your stand or something like they're going to find it and they're going to go right after it so as soon as you're done like yeah don't don't dawdle like just take it away which which is fine in some situations yeah like right now we're kind of in a flow still so yeah. if you put out your stuff to have your bees get at it mm-hmm. but realize that if if you have 20 or 30 beehives or even five or two yeah. sometimes the weaker one won't be able to get at that honey to clean it up but the stronger one you have on the other side of your apiary is coming over and taking it and then they're going to remember that there was food in that area because when we did some testing last year just putting out sugar syrup in different places i mean i put it out on my deck at one point and then my neighbors said hey we have a lot of bees coming and just checking out our deck and so what they were doing is they they ate all the food on our deck and then they went to the neighbor's deck looking for food and yeah. then the neighbors next to them looking for food. So landmarks. just keep that in mind. They're very intelligent creatures that, yeah, yeah they love landmarks. So if, if you're putting something out that's very different than everything else in the area, then they're going to, they're going to take to it if you put and, food or something there. Yeah. And that's something that we've talked to um, some, some newbie keepers about is, is landmarks because that's one thing that you can do is marking your hives differently. If you've watched our channel, you notice that most of our hives are painted differently. Um, that's not just because we like color. That's also to help the bees and keep them from drifting to other hives. Mm-hmm. So some, some kind of a little bit different. But now that you've harvested from your flow hive, what's next? Oh, yeah. What happens? Yeah. So, so inside the hive. Inside. Before we keep okay, going. Okay. Yep. Uh, a question that, that we got was, okay, when when you go ahead and crack all the frames and the honey flows out and comes through the tube, right, what's the next thing that happens? Like, there's still wax cappings on the frame. Yeah. Well, what do the bees do? <laughs> and I, I had a picture, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can find it real quick, because it was, it was pretty cool. Okay. Um, no, it's not there. So, but what they do is give them two or three days come back and look in that little observation window they actually uncapped everything and when i'm looking through that window again they're already starting to fill all of those cells again so for us i was like that's pretty awesome yeah it kind of sucks that we're making them do all the extra work to get the wax off and everything when we could have done that but they were swarmy anyway. I just want to keep them busy. And it's not as much work as when we do comb honey. That's a lot of extra work for them. Yeah. So they got to draw out new comb and everything. Yeah. But, yeah, they they know when there's not honey underneath that, that capping anymore. And they clean it up and just refill. It's kind of like when it, if you extract uh, the traditional extraction where you take off the cappings and spin it in an extractor. Um once you put back those those frames, the comb's already drawn out. They'll clean them up. They'll refill, and you just do it all over again. It's kind of the same idea. Pretty cool. I found that oh, picture. Oh yay! Yeah. So let me let me see if I can get it to fit, okay. and then I'll shoot it over and let everybody see it. Okay. Fit to screen, or maybe I'll crop it a little bit because we don't need this this edge. Oh, well, maybe we do. Maybe we do. <laughs> okay. There we go. Pretty cool. So this is the window looking in the side of the flow hive. Um, I don't know if the the second edition, the flow hive too. I don't know if they have those or not, but or maybe they have more. 
I don't know. No, they, they got one. To, it's still just the one on one side? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's pretty cool, though. If you are like like we were <laughs> in our first year, it was it was a struggle to not get into the bees because we wanted to know what was going on. Um, and and people tell you, hey, don't get in them too often because they're, they might abscond because they're like, why do you keep taking my roof off my house all the time? So we tried to restrain ourselves, but this was a good kind of like in between because we could we could look at them. Obviously, we were still looking at the entrance to the hi, Maskell. We were still looking at the the entrance to the hive, the bees coming and going. But um, but this was super cool because we could we could watch them um, and put honey in and um, <laughs> you know I love you too. You're so sweet. Um, well, yeah, we could we could see the bees, and as soon as we saw them, you know, start getting up into the flow hive, it's like, oh my god, they're doing it! <laughs> they're up there now, finally. Yeah, it was super exciting. I figured I let the star of the show. In. <laughs> but yeah, but this is this is the picture that after we extracted, they started going in and just almost in strips just taking down wax and then if you look closely at the picture you can see that there's nectar being filled in there again so that was pretty awesome all right you want to do your uh yeah so okay now that you have your honey it's in bottles what do you do you have to make labels right okay um so there are some requirements it does have to say honey i just it does have to have um your address on it uh you don't see our address on this one actually but this was this was one of the first this is not our final edition of our of our current label sorry about that that's my fault um but it does have our address on it and it has to have the weight of the honey because it doesn't go by fluid ounces it goes by weight so it needs to have it in ounces and in grams so for the federal government in the united states that's all it has to have that's really it. <laughs> it's super simple. Uh, North Carolina suggest or North Carolina wants you to have a few other things, but those are the big ones. Um, but really, make it about you. And so Tommy, oh, okay. Tommy says the Flow Super's been on for a week and, and, no, and no bees, and and now they're but now they're bound. bound. Oh, so that kind of sucks because hopefully Tommy, you weren't feeding your bees at the same time but uh if if you have a way of transferring some of those frames into a box above the flow super yeah and then you can you know put new frames in your bottom box leave your flow super in the middle and then put another box on top and put those frames in just to get them to start moving up and into it and then once you do that, you can kind of rearrange again if you don't want that box on top. Yeah. That's yeah, that's that's the game you play, <laughs> and that's that's why we we do not suggest as a beginner to to get a flow. Um, yeah, and you gotta wax the the frames. That's like the biggest thing. So we I keep hitting on that because we uh, we have our friend Woods Friendly Garden out there in uh, the western side of North Carolina. And they, they started with a bunch of flows, uh, supers. And we said, first thing you got to do is wax those frames, wax them. And he waxed them and now his bees are all over it. Um, they did swarm once at one point, but they're, they're all over it and it's awesome. Yeah. So that, that at least gives him one season where the bees are in there and trying to work it. And then next season, probably all of them get filled and he's able to help out the community yeah okay but i mean you don't want your your labels to be super boring either right mm -hmm. so you want to project what you want the public to see about you and your apiary and maybe how you feel about bees or maybe you have a youtube channel so you want to throw that link on there <laughs> he really is the star of the show huh he wants to be yeah um 
So you'll see ours on the on the screen there. That's Rascal's Honey Farm. That's mm -hmm. our apiary is named after Rascal, our puppy, who's not really a puppy anymore. I know. And if you're looking for it, you can currently get it at Boonies Beer and Wine yeah. uh, here in Moyoc. And then we're looking at, there's a bakery, LJ Beaners. Mm -hmm. And I think we got something going yeah. where we're going to, Put some honey there too, they're gonna, and they're gonna try it out. Yeah, the the Moyoc Farm Market normally has our stuff, so you have yeah. options if you start, you know, becoming a honey producer. You just say, "Hey, I made too much for myself this year. I wanna, I wanna get some funding back." <laughs> super so. on top of brood in the flow. I got a super on top of brood of the flow. I'm guessing that means brood in the flow hive, which we have had in the past. Um, if you don't use queen excluders, which we don't generally do, um, maybe he's saying that that's how he's going to correct it. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So you, you just got to be careful there with the queen walking up and down. Yeah. She, she may lay in it, but if you got no wax on there, like she ain't going to lay no. in No, no, that's should be fine. Yeah. Um, just remember find her when you go to switch everything back. Yeah. Because if you don't and she gets stuck in the flow, she will lay in the flow because she has to. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, but yeah, like he was saying, you have some options. So we, um, we have a friend who sells his honey at the farmer's market himself or gets his, his son to do it for him <laughs> uh, sometimes. But you can, you can do that. 100% you can do that. Um but you do have other options. If you don't want to sell it yourself, maybe you don't, maybe you can't go to the farmer's market and sit there and, and you know, say, hey, come buy my honey. It's amazing. Um, we, we both have full-time jobs, so it makes it a little bit difficult, especially when he's traveling. But we can sell it wholesale to other places, and we know we have guaranteed money that way, and then they can sell it. For more money <laughs> <laughs> so that is an option um, just make sure that you know what the price is you know the going price for honey is in your area and make it you know competitive you don't want to lose money but make it competitive or get that like niche corner market um, no one around here that we've seen still sells comb honey so we make comb honey. We know that it takes the bees more, you know, more energy, more work. We get a little bit less honey because they do have to draw wax all over again for those. We don't do it for all of our hives, but we do some for sure um, because we know that there's a market for it and we know no one else is doing it. So we definitely get money that way. Um, but um, yeah, make, make your labels about your apiary. Uh, make sure you have your name on there. If you have social media, put those links on there because that, that gets your name out there. Uh, if you have a website, throw that on there. Um, oh. Don't... Sorry, I'm reading the comment now. Yeah. No, not in the flow and a super on top of the flow. Yeah, okay. but, but Al said he just ordered a couple Oh, boxes. I missed that. Okay, sorry. Uh, not sure when... To... Not so sure where to go at this moment. Yeah. You just just or so, I'm guessing you just ordered a couple of flow hive boxes. Yep. I'm guessing that's what that is. Okay. So hopefully you came to the right video and you get some helpful tips and tricks with how to make it work. Yep. Um, so just just again, if you just joined us, uh, if you're buying them, look at go get a mentor or talk to your association and see who's who actually has a flow hive. But my suggestion in North Carolina, this is what works, is wax your frames really good. So that that's try and find somebody who has actual beeswax, not the, what's the? Not paraffin para or anything else. Paraffin like wax. it needs to be pure beeswax, yep. preferably from a beekeeper that you know and trust that has, okay. I, they well, don't I mean, do anything crazy do. with their, yeah, yeah, I guess. That's anyway, true. so you're going to rub the, all that wax on the top frames and just do it and do it and do it. Um, and, and on the face of the frame. So you can do that. And then the next thing you want to do is, um, you know, put it on there, but you want your, you want your hive to be kind of 
booming to the point of like you're worried about swarming they're a little almost bit. almost swarming, yeah. Um, you don't want to really feed them too much because once you start doing that, you kind of get where, where Tommy is. Uh, is this too late in the season? Where are you coming from? That would be my that, question. It makes a huge difference. It may not seem yeah. like it, but it's between here and even in Northern Virginia, there's a big difference between the times and the, and the seasons. So is there a flow on right now? That's really your big thing. Do you have a lot of flowers blooming? And not just any flowers, but flowers that bees are foraging from. So right now we have clover blooming, we have tulip poplar blooming, mm -hmm. we have, oh goodness, what else? I, uh, those are the two really big ones for window. us right now. Oh, we have roses. <laughs> they're gorgeous. Um, and they're actually getting on the roses this year, which is not, we haven't really seen a whole lot of that in the past. No, but I think it helps that I've been teleworking and stuck in this room where I can look <laughs> out the window and be like, oh, there's bees on the roses. I've never seen that. <laughs> yeah. um, but we have Dutch clover that started. Yeah. And well, actually, even before that, red maple. So you got to look at the yeah. trees. Nevada. Okay. Nevada. Ooh. The okay. only thing I've seen from Nevada is from an airplane going to Vegas <laughs> and then Vegas. And so all I see is desert. Yeah. Um, um, I, I do have a friend that has property out there and he wants me to put bees out there so bad. And I can't convince myself to do that because I don't, I just don't know. I'm oh. going to show something off real quick. Yeah. So we have this book. It's um, the Xerces Society, and I, hopefully I'm not saying that wrong and butchering it, uh, but it's 100 Plants to Feed the Bees. This is not specifically about honeybees only. However, there is a legend in the book that will tell you which plants honeybees will get on. Now, that doesn't mean that it's only going to be honeybees on it, but it kind of gives you an idea. So if you... Um, I'm not sure really the plants in Nevada, honestly. However, if, um, if you have an extension center around you, you can talk to the extension center. They'll get you in touch with a master gardener and they can tell you what flowers are blooming and you can then look them up in this book and say, are these any good for my bees? Or you can even talk to them and say, hey, what's something I can plant that is good for honeybees and maybe it'll be good for other pollinators also but even if they're even if your honeybees aren't getting on them there are pollinators getting on them and that's never a bad thing yep. and bad thing. in the description there is a link to this book oh yay um it's 13 bucks yeah. it's amazing i use it a lot we we do use it a lot and we have planted plants specifically that we found in this book and our bees have done really well yep. and i can't say for sure that's what it was but it can have hurt <laughs> um but here you know we got you look at the trees first because the trees are gonna uh, bloom first and then second you're gonna look at uh flowers mm -hmm. at that point when here like you get dandelions that start red maple goes yeah. um a couple other things kind of start and that you'll start seeing pollen come in and then after that dutch clover is popping in then you got crimson clover after that mm -hmm. you also have all your bushes so if you got like blueberry blackberry um whatever all of that's going to so burnsville north carolina Ooh. got all that blooming not not feed at, at all. all good awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome yeah um I don't have it spooled up right now, but I wanted to show you that we had a hive in the last week that went up 17 pounds. Yes, insane. I, and <laughs> and I we're, go not, we're not feeding any of our hives at the yeah. moment. So it's it's all, unless somebody else is feeding them somewhere in the neighborhood, hopefully not. <laughs> no, because um, we have a couple that do have, um, that are like small swarms that yeah. we caught at other people's property. And I have a feeder on that. And those bees aren't even taking down the feed. It's just sitting there at the same level and they're going out and yeah. filling up the hive with everything. So mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome. Um, so Tommy is in Burnsville, North Carolina, and he's the one that has the, the flow hive issue. And you know what? We live in North Carolina. You think I would know that, but I don't even... I, I, the name is not familiar to me. Yeah. So I don't know. Are you in the Western region? Central, Eastern, oh, well, he's just going to look it up. I'll look it up. 
We're sitting at the computer. Why not? <laughs> there we go. Burnsville, North Carolina. Okay. Yancey County. Okay. I don't know where that is. All right. That's... Yeah. Oh. Western. Oh. Yeah. North of Asheville. He's like okay. 12 hours from us. That's not 12 <laughs> hours. That's like... Okay. So you're about six hours away from us, but your season is going to start at a completely different time than ours. I think it's like a full four weeks, if I'm not mistaken. I know there was a big research project by one of the grad students at North Carolina State University, and she was talking about it at one of our conferences. Do you remember? Wasn't she, it like four weeks? So you're talking about Annie? Yeah. Annie worked for Bear. She I thought she was working no. with the NC... No, okay. she got all that money to give out scales at one of the conferences to regular beekeepers, and then we linked all the scales together so mm -hmm. we could figure out the mountain range, the Piedmont range, and the coastal range. When does each of the flows start? We yeah, actually still we still have that report. So yeah. if uh, you shoot us an email, Tommy, we'll shoot it back out to you so yeah. that you can look at that data. It's from That's a couple years ago, so like the flow will sometimes start on May 1st, sometimes mm -hmm. start... Or not May. Uh, sorry, April first, or maybe for you it's going to start mid March or March first. So, we can we can shoot that off to you. That that's easy and it's free. Yeah, we have flowers, fruit trees, and a lot of the tree tree there leafing out there, leafing out here. Sorry, it's hard to read. <laughs> leafing out here. It. Is it too late in the season to start now? I would say probably not. That's my initial thought. Probably not. Um, if you have a lot of things that are blooming, um, they will bring something in. I wouldn't anticipate getting any honey from them because they do need, they do need to make sure that they have enough stores for themselves before you take any. Yeah, that, that's kind of my thought too is go ahead and wax up your frames, put it out there, let the bees get in there mm -hmm. and that, that, Bee pheromone from just them walking around and, yeah. you know, smell uh, will attract them. So if they don't end up using it and going hard at it this year, I would give it a try. Again, next year. You know, year. next year. Yeah. Store them properly. And um, I would read the site and how to store them. How we store them is we bought this big, um, it's almost, what, a chest or a foot it, locker? It's a chest freezer. Oh, uh, oh, you're talking about the locker. Yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Okay, yeah. So it... It goes in the back of trucks, essentially, yeah. and we put the frames in that because it seals very nicely, yeah. and um, the only thing you kind of got to worry about is if uh, if there's a lot of liquid, uh, nectar, <laughs> and you put it in there, it may get moldy a little bit, yeah. um, but wrap it in a trash bag and call okay. it a day, and then next year put them on again. Yep, and um, bees and bikinis. I'm trying to flow hive again after my epic fail last season. Don't give up. Don't yeah. give up. Our first season was, it was not. But keep trying. Try some different techniques. Try putting putting a pulled, a pulled out super on top. Or if you have a hybrid flow, put some honey frames, you know, in there with it also. All of that, like he was saying, the bee pheromones will start walking on it. It'll start smelling more like bees and less like plastic. And they will take to it. That's the best we can say. It's, oh, nice. Okay, good. Good, good. Yeah, I just wanted to put that in there. Yeah, awesome. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, you spent the money. Just, yeah, yeah, don't know, give up Do now. what you can. Yeah. And now, if you're looking at buying one of these and you live in the northern area, I know Vino Farms had tried to use them at one point. Um, I, I personally just, if you're below the Mason-Dixon line, give it a try. If you're above it, like, just kind of, Really save that money for something else. <laughs> that's that's my well, thoughts on it. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, I think because cause we like to try different things, Yeah. I'm not going to say it can't happen. I'm going to say you probably need a little more experience beekeeping so you know a little more about the yeah. bee behavior before before giving it a try. Yeah. That's what I would think. Because to me, it's about temperature um, that you go through. But mm -hmm. also, like, I mean... They have, they have a big, heavy, fast flow the further north you go. That's true. So if you miss that date of putting it on or it, it's brand new and you put it on like that, it, it's difficult. Northern Canada. Well, wow. There, there you go. So, <laughs> so 
So okay. once you get this to work, you yeah. let us know. We'll watch your live video. Definitely. And, and you can. And I'll eat my. I'll eat my words. I'll come on. I'll apologize and say oh, my I bad. Missed, I missed Alice too. I just don't want to kill the bees by not being prepared. I. My heart goes out to you because I. I feel that too. I. You know we want the best for our bees. I know and it sounds silly because they're insects, but we do. Um, cause healthy bees are happy bees, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the cool thing about the flow, right, is you're not using the flow super as your brood chamber. Right. So right. if they don't go up there, they're just going to expand. Yeah. They're going to be healthy and then they're going to say, we got no more room and they're going to swarm. And then you can actually do your split that way if you're like out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, at, at the end of the day, the more that you can get that, that super smelling like bees and putting the wax on there, yeah. I don't think you can really hurt them. I mean, the bees are smart enough. Put out some water. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, there, there's another thing that you could do if you're worried about the bees and them getting enough nutrition is uh, get one of those horse... Um, uh, assault bricks. Assault bricks. Assault, assault lick brick. Yeah. And then you just hang it under something so that when it rains, like it doesn't get wet. And the bees will take to that during mm -hmm. the hot season because they'll get water and then they'll go to the salt brick and then they'll go back. Yeah. And you'll see them a lot in the mud and trying to just pull out nutrients. So that's how you, you keep them healthy and happy. Yeah. You know. Um, short season. I can imagine it's a short season in Canada. I know... Our, our warm season when we lived in Washington was not very long. So I can't even imagine in northern Canada. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Well, she might be in a, a part. Like, we were we were over in the Seattle area where it barely snowed. That's true. But then you cross the mountains and it's like snow country. So. Oh, we're so happy, Al. Thank you. We appreciate it. Nice. That's awesome. Hopefully you are learning more. <laughs> Hopefully it's not just us rambling the whole time because that's that's kind of what we feel like sometimes that we're just ramp like we haven't we have a whole outline and then we just start going off on tangents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, speaking of my outline, should we get back to should we get back to that? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. You were talking about labels. Was talking about labels. Oh, yeah. Here, wait. Um, before we do that, oh, I want to do this. Okay. Um, oh, oh, we get oh, snow. Oh, I, I bet you get snow. I feel like the way she what? says it is. Oh, we get snow. Like, <laughs> do you do you get the snow? <laughs> yeah, do you get the snow where you can't open your door? You're like shouldering it, like. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I imagine. Call the neighbor to let us out of the house again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I want to put this on real quick. Okay. Hang on. Say hi this one. I okay. don't even know if they could hear you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you can hear me either. I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully you could. It was pretty cool though. If you saw that that jar of honey, that was actually a jar of the honey right after, like literally right after we got it out from under the tube from the flow hive. And that kind of like ziggy zag streaky thing. It's just from where the honey was going in. <laughs> super cool looking. Not there anymore because it's settled, but it was super cool looking. Um, not what you want if you're trying to, you know, submit your honey for any kind of um, honey competition. Judging. Like judging. Yep. Yeah, judging competitions or anything like that, but still pretty cool. So you want to show off your label, right? Yeah, what about I want this? to show. I don't yeah. know what that video is. is that yeah, a good we can one? put that on there. Okay. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. So. Okay. This is not look working. It. No what wait. What is that? Wait. <laughs> it did like three things in one. <laughs> yeah. Wait. Okay, but this is like I said, the the label that you're seeing on the screen right now is one of the first kind of drafts of the label as I was working on it. Um, like I said, that was my fault. I should have given him the, the right one. But still pretty cool. Um, but we we put a little blurb on there about our honey and and how, yes, we're local because we only sell it locally, except for like some friends of ours. But we also, obviously, we talk to people about bees because we're really big into the education part of it. Uh, but we not only sell extracted honey, but we sell comb honey. We also sell 
bees not more than we're allowed to in North Carolina because we're not registered yet. Yes. But we do plan on it next year. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the future. Um, but we, you know, we have some other options as well. We don't just sell extracted honey and that's it. But this specific label is just for our extracted honey bottles. Um, but I designed this on a website. Um, it's, it's all mine. Like I, Mike drew, drew the rascal with the little bee and I colored it in and I, I did that at work <laughs> yeah and it's super adorable I love it it's awesome because that that to me that just like encompasses what our apiary is like we're fun we have well I like to think we have fun with it <laughs> most most of the time at least I am, I am the opposite sometimes <laughs> sometimes uh, it yeah. does happen but uh, for the most part yeah we have a lot of fun with it and Obviously, we have our, our social media on there as well because we want people to see um, more of what we do. Hey, we are people. <laughs> we do care about our bees. We do take care of them. And um, and we are interested in, in educating more people and letting them know bees are important and they're awesome and they're not to be afraid of. And hey, that giant swarm over there, don't worry about them. They're fine. <laughs> yeah. Call a beekeeper. They'll come get them. <laughs> Uh, for those of you that are thinking I'm an artist, that's not true. What I can do is I can <laughs> I can look at a picture and I can draw that, but I can't but like so come up with my own sort of drawings. Uh, then it just looks like little stick figures or like <laughs> somebody with a really droopy face. I've tried that before, uh, but if I'm looking at a picture, I can just draw it and it. I don't know. I'm like a, a printer, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. So hopefully, hopefully you guys love it too. I think it turned out really well. Um, I'm super excited about it. So I used kind of wraps around. So you'll see on the front of the bottle, you just see, you know, where it says honey and rascals honey farm. And then the sides where it has those little yellow boxes, they wrap around to the sides of the, of the bottle so pretty excited about it I think they turned out really really well hmm. yeah oh well okay well it's there it you can see there. it it's just I hit center it's the just screen kind of small and it's, it didn't do it it's okay it's still there well, that's what matters yeah anyway um, but I used a, a website called canva uh, you can also get labels printed from other companies. Um, you print, we've actually used in the past, and then I got this amazing, can I, which way is it? This Cricut behind me, super mm-hmm. excited about that. And I was like, I can make our own labels, it's gonna be amazing. Um, so yeah, I, I made labels this year. This is actually the first year I made them myself and designed them and, well, I've designed the ones in the past also, but these I designed by myself completely printed them out myself, cut them out on the Cricut, and oh, I wanted to get the sticker paper so I can show them what kind of sticker paper we got. Okay. Come on. I'm gonna keep playing with this. Okay. okay. Right. If y'all have any questions about Flow Hive, totally derail us, ask us your questions. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, because we've, I can always come back and I'm gonna try and keep doing little crazy things to, look at that tail wagon. Uh, little crazy <laughs> things to, with this program so I can get better at it. Yeah. And um, if you have questions about anything else too, just let us know. Like we can, we can just keep going off the rail. It's fine. Um, but I want to show you this. Hopefully you guys can see this. It's, I, I'm sure I'm going to say that wrong also, but Joyeza maybe. It's a vinyl matte sticker paper sheet. It's a full sticker paper, eight and a half by 11. Um, so your standard printer size, oh, standard printer size, and um, yep, that's the first one. Right there. No, that one. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, and it's a matte sheet. Yep, that's one? that one. Mm-hmm. Inkjet okay. matte. There we so go. I'll, I'll just so put that on the screen. So inkjet matte sticker paper, and you can print it out on your regular at-home printer. You don't need anything special. Um, let it dry for a second before you start handling it. That was one of the tips whenever I got it and I haven't had any issues. And I'm super excited about this also because um, our comb honey, I don't put the weights on them because they all weigh a little bit different because we don't use foundation. And 
these um, because we don't use foundation. So they're all just a little bit different. So I don't put the weights on the stickers for the comb honey. I write them in, but the stickers that we'd had previously, as soon as you write on it, it just smears. It doesn't, with these stickers, it doesn't do that. It's amazing, I'm super excited about that. I know that sounds kind of ridiculous, but yeah. Woo, tall Made cedars it. is Yay. here. Yay, got your tea set down. Can't believe I caught it. Labels did turn out very cool. Oh, I love them. Thank you so much. I'm so excited about them. I was like, look these, look, check them out, babe. Look, it's so exciting. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I'm super happy. It was kind of a shot in the dark um, trying these out, but they've worked out really well. Uh, they stick super easy. Uh, they cut out on my Cricut. If you do have a Cricut, if you're interested in that, they cut out really easily. So I had no issues. And, um, and I even kind of... I was even I was washing dishes and I had some of the honey bottles on the on the kitchen sink next to it and that some of them got splashed and no issues there either. So mm -hmm. yay! Uh, but of course, if you don't have a Cricut, you don't have to worry about that or any kind of other crafty cutting system because I know there's others out there. You can just use scissors. That works too. I just have it. Gonna use it. Makes it super professional looking, I believe. Yep. A uh, couple of. And most, okay. most people in the smaller areas, around here at least, yeah. they just go on, what, Dadent or yeah. whatever the site Dayton is. Dayton or Man Lake or... And you can just buy your, you know, your labels that way and then just print on them or custom, you know, order them. Yeah. And that's fine too. You, you don't so, have to go like this, but mm -hmm. because... The road that we sell our honey on is highly trafficked, trafficked by <laughs> trafficked, trafficked by tourists from yes. you know New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. Uh, so Swarmstead, if you place. come down to the Outer Banks, like <laughs> you're probably gonna want to go past, you straight past right, pass right, right by <laughs> us. Um, anybody that goes down to the Outer Banks, yeah. if you take 168, you're passing us. So yeah. uh, shoot us an email if you want to see the apiary. We'll, yeah, we'll bring you by. Yeah, we absolutely. Care. We love talking but bees. We have to stand out. So if our honey's at the farm market, they have other honeys as well. Maybe they're not quite as local, but they have local honey because it's in Virginia or North Carolina. But as we all know, if we're in the United States or Canada, I'm sure you probably know also, the state is pretty big. I mean, I can drive from this end of the state to that end of the state and it takes, what, eight, nine hours. Yep. I mean, it's pretty extensive. So when we say we're local... We're like a a baseball throw away from the farm market. Yeah. So we're very very local. So whenever um, yeah, whenever we sell there, they say, yeah. oh, they're only like two three blocks away from here. So yeah. Local really means something to a couple of the folks around here. Definitely. If, if it says from Virginia, mm -hmm. what they typically do is they'll just put a label on there that says made for the farm market. Yeah. So it could be coming from anywhere. Yeah. And some of the folks kind of take. Uh, take that at, at, at like a grain of salt. They yeah. don't want to get it unless unless it it's actually local. physically says it's yeah. local. Yeah. But for ours, you know, you, you got to get that eye catching label on there. So they pick it up to look at it a little bit more before, you know, they're just like, Oh, that's just another one. Oh, that's another one. So some things that we've done is our bottles are shaped completely differently than other like, I haven't seen anybody else that has honey in bottles like we have, actually. No. So. And, and we did that because, number one, it stands out. But number two, also, <laughs> if honey didn't work for us, <laughs> I wanted to be able to put beer and mead and other things in there. Yes. And be able to have a reusable pop top. Yes. And, and that you can't always do with honey jars. Like, when yep. people buy it, they just buy it, they use it, and they put it in the, the, trash, in the trash or recycling, depending on how and you when feel they, that day. And when they buy our honey, when they finish the honey... They can use that jar for something else. Maybe they have some cold brew coffee like me, and then they just want to fill that, and they can take it to work. <laughs> yeah. He's, so. he's being crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Be good. Um, uh, oh, a couple other things. Uh, that picture that you showed did not, did not actually show it, but I also made some safety seals. So because our, because our bottles are the flip-top style, Mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that if 
if it has been tampered with. It's basically a tamper seal. If anybody's tampered with it, you can tell. So it does have like a little extra thing and it's, it's got a cute little bee on top and it's got, um, some, I think I just put raw honey on the side maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's Which, nothing super crazy, but it's a little bit extra, just like that one extra step. Which I feel like putting raw honey on there for something that you sell at a farm market really kind of helps because then when they hold up the honey, they see like little speckles in there and, and it's typically just pollen. Or, yeah. You can see the pollen yeah. in it. If you're looking at, yeah, you're like, never seeing like light. in ours, you don't see bee legs. You don't see, yeah. you know, half a bee in there or anything like it's, that's filtered out Aww. the bigger stuff. Tall Cedars likes our bottle too. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We're excited about it. We like it. I have to put up another picture or something. Okay. Um, let me see. Oh, comb honey versus bottled honey, though. I did say we sell comb honey as well. So our labels are a little bit different. They have the same basic outline, but they're sh thinner. They're not as wide. They're not as tall on the bottle because they have to go across the comb honey boxes. Um, so they're a little more squished, a little more compact, but it, it essentially has, it has all the same information. Um, the only difference, the only big difference is it doesn't have a specific weight listed on the sticker. I just put a little underscore line so I can pin it in because like I said, they're, they're all different weights. So that's really the only big difference for our labels. Um, and then with that label as well, with, with our new ones, we don't have to worry about a safety seal on the honeycomb because it is the safety seal because it covers, you know, the top and over the sides. It overlaps. Yeah. So that's, that's nice also. <clears throat> um, but if you are going to sell your honey, whether it is wholesale, retail, know the difference between the two. Uh, wholesale is you're going to sell it to somebody else who's then going to sell it for you. Retail is you're selling direct to a customer. Okay. Make sure you know the difference between the pricing. So, you're not going to sell your honey to a store for them to resale at, at what you would sell it to someone else. It's just not, they're not going to make any money that way. So have a price in mind before you go and say, Hey, we have this. Are you interested? Um, think about your, think about your pitch beforehand and have some product on hand. Also doesn't hurt, especially if you have some that you're willing to let them taste before they, you know, purchase it. Hi! Hey. Welcome! So, I was talking about you earlier, Woods Friendly <laughs> Garden. Yes, you were. Yeah. Because... <laughs> talking uh, about the flow hive. Al up there in the chat was saying, hey, I, I just bought a bunch of flow hives and I want to know, you know, what... How do I start it? Is it too late to start? That sort of thing. And we gave him the same advice we gave you. Hopefully that helped with waxing the, the sides of the frames and making sure there's a lot of bees in your box to really get at it. Um, but if you have any other tips that you've done a little different that you found somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind putting it in the chat for Al, that will help him. Uh, Al's in Nevada. And then can you add royal jelly to honey as an additive benefit? Um, added health benefit? You, oh, okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it to the jar of honey, but if you wanted to do that, like, uh, it's expensive. It's, so I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. If you can figure out how to easily harvest royal jelly, let me know. Okay? Because I can't figure out how to easily do it. Because it is a super expensive product. If you can get royal jelly by itself and sell it by itself, people will pay a lot of money for it. Because it's used in cosmetics. It's used in like anti-aging, like special crazy expensive eye cream like and you're looking at me like i'm crazy because well, you, you have, have you don't know you but, haven't asked me about it but i can just keep making queens out there and we'll just take it from the queens i'm sure that's how they do it but how how are you going to get it out of there we're going to have to how well, do how do you get the royal jelly out? do you use like a grafting tool use a like syringe. just kind of scoop it out plunge it out i don't know i i feel like i i, I mean, looked it we, up couple years ago and i was like wow way over my head i'm not doing that we could maybe try i don't but know we'll see i didn't know you wanted to do that i'm just saying 
If you figure out how, let me know. Maybe we'll give it a shot yeah. because we do like to try new things. So well, now that work. now that Tall Cedars is here, <laughs> I want I want to show this video real quick, and I think I got it set up so that we can talk over it too. Oh, good. Um, but this is a video of when our friends came over who had never dealt with bees, and we were um, we got them to come over because we said if you help us harvest this, we can put you know we'll give you a bottle of honey. We put you saran wrap do, on. You need a strong hive. I also brush melted beeswax on my floor frames. Awesome, yep. awesome. We put Good. saran wrap on there top because oh, really after again. a while the bees will start well, smelling the honey, uh, and they'll, you know, they'll migrate their way back so. here. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> be like, what are you doing? So we can turn that down. But essentially, I just wanted to show you kind of oh redacted message. What it kind of looked like is. <laughs> I didn't have a stand, so first make sure that you have a stand to get up there. And then the next thing, I just wanted to show that it fits on an eight frame <laughs> box. And because it it actually fits on an eight frame, you'll see I have a queen excluder there because I didn't want them to quickly take all the honey because they were in a swarmy mood, yeah. mood that day. But um, right, right there, all it is is the frames is what you see in the bottom window and then there's a slit at the top and I'll try and get a picture of it instead of a video that way we can talk about it a little bit more. But something else I don't know if you noticed that if if you don't currently have a flow frame or flow hive is that that is an eight frame box and it only fits six flow frames in it. So they're not exactly the same width as a standard Langstroth frame. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. They do hold a lot of honey, though. I will say that for sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, they do. Okay. Where are we going? I don't, I don't yeah. know yet. I'm, I want to put this one up again, but okay. I don't have fit. like Can you fit, to, fit screen? to screen. I could yeah, do that, but I think it's going to be like stretched out. Hey, guys, want to talk about oh, the flow hive? So hold on. Hold okay. on. Let's rotate it. Okay. Is it going to be upside down or rotate? Oh. oh, but now the the thing's there, so. Sorry. If you weren't here at the beginning of the video, we have new software. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> we have some we have some big learning learning curves to, to jump over. There we go. Um, uh, I have a 10 frame hive. Okay. That's not bad. They make 10 frame flow hives as well if you are interested in them. Yep. Uh, we do, our our hybrid flow, flow hive is actually a 10 frame. So, there we go. Oh, okay. that works. Okay. Yay! Hey guys, want to talk here about the go. flow hive yes. super Harvest and what we do so here funny. in North Carolina. Let me turn that down. Okay, I'm going to turn that sound off. But... What I'm trying to show you here is that we have the flow frames across. You got your tubes, but there's this little slit at the top that's uh, capped off with uh, little plastic caps. And you take those out, and that's where your key fits in, and you can open up all of these channels so that it flows down into the tube. It's pretty awesome if, uh, if you get a chance to actually harvest honey. I do suggest putting the... These, Saran wrap. Saran wrap on top because the bees will smell the honey and they will come over and check it out. When I was doing it by myself the other day, there were a lot of bees checking it out. In this video, not so much. They were being good. And Woods Friendly Garden says he has a 10 frame setup with seven flow frames in it. So okay. eight frame hive, six frame flows, yeah. 10 frame hive, seven flow frames. So I will say at this point, it would be a lot cheaper to just build yourself a hive box and then just buy the frames and make the two cuts to put you know the the harvest yeah. areas so we were looking at it the other day and i think it was basically half the price mm -hmm. if if you were to buy your own frames and then just modify a box i think it's about half the price or very close to it at least yeah okay I think I think I covered everything. Huh. Yeah, look at that. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, do you have labels already that you've created yourself? Um, or if not, do you want to? That'd be pretty fun. 
that thing. Yeah, that that's show? them. Oh, Look that's that. what you want to show? Yeah. Okay. Let me do that real quick. I'll put that right in the middle. Awesome. There okay. we go. So this is the, oh, the Flow Hive 2. Okay, so Woods Friendly Garden has Flow Hive 2. Nice. So you got the stain. Yeah, I've seen that in the videos. I don't even know why I'm acting surprised. So I've, I've seen it in your videos that you have the Flow Hive 2 because you have the stand and you have the little, like, ledge for the bottles mm -hmm. for when you do harvesting and stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So on the screen now, you see our, that's our label. So that's what it looks like when it comes out of the printer. So I've done all my design on the computer. I print it on the sticker paper like this. And then that black line <clears throat> around the stickers shows the cricket, which is this again, back here. Mm -hmm. um, it's just like a crafty cutting tool and it does a bunch of other stuff too, but it shows the cricket where the borders are. And then it, from there, I don't know, it's computer magic and it just, cut, it cuts it out how I tell it to cut it out. <laughs> That's my computer, computer magic terms. Um, great info. I do. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of wish we had that little like shelf. I feel like that would make it so much easier. You saw our, our, our kind of, I kind of weird little setup where we have just a a mini log that we oh, yeah, so we yeah. built so that stand we built that's actually the first one that we have is that was our original hive placement we built the stand cemented it in the ground and everything had the hive there we've had a hive there for the entire time we've been beekeeping mm -hmm. actually but we built that stand specifically for the flow hive thinking oh this would be amazing we can just set the jar here and the flow will be here and then we'll just you know, open it up and it'll go right in. Well, we are not thinking that it's like brood box, another brood, brood box, box maybe, or yeah. a super and then another super. Like it just starts stacking up really, really high. So yeah, if you get a chance to join Woods Friendly Gardens channel, um, oh, yeah, for sure. they were just in the newspaper the other day because I, yeah. I follow them on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, they do really good work out there. And uh, Western North Carolina. Oh, Piedmont. Pied so that's Piedmont. so Charlotte area Piedmont. is actually very very close to where I'm originally from. But yeah, that's technically considered the Piedmont region. Okay. Well, Just we're in saying. coastal, so we are in the coastal region. When, when, it's funny when you go to the uh, <laughs> to the, the conferences, conferences <laughs> where you were talking about like, this the other day. <laughs> they're like, oh, I'm coastal, and then the mountain area is like, I'm the mountain area, and the Piedmont's like. I'm just here. <laughs> like, it's so funny to but, watch. No, what we were talking about is that they act like there's like a very definitive line between the coastal and Piedmont and then the Piedmont and mountain yeah. regions. But and it's not. not. I mean, it just kind of like blurs just, all together. Yeah. But, so. Yeah. Um, but they do a great job. And then I just wanted to throw this up here too. Okay. Because I'm finally figuring out the video stuff. Nice. Okay. Awesome. You'll have to let us know how your flow frames do. Yeah, since you're up in Canada, be yeah. uh, the bikini lady bikinis. said she's going to do the same yep. thing. So I'm going to put this video on real okay. quick. Okay. Let's do it. And let's see. Okay. Look at all those bees. Look at all that capped honey. Oh, gorgeous. Yep. Beautiful. And, oh, I turned down the sound. Okay. I, th I thought we were talking about it. So this is what a fro flow frame looks like when you pull it out. And um, I just wanted to go over, like, what does it look like from the side? Because when you look at that window, sometimes it tricks you into yeah. thinking you don't actually have any honey there. And, yeah. and you do. It's just, you know, they're not at the far end of the, the frame yet. So it, it's kind of deceptive. And that's and that's why I think it helps if you're if you've been beekeeping for a little bit first before you get it because you as a beekeeper know that the bees fill the middle of the frame before they fill the outsides of the frame yep. and they fill the center of the brood or the super or the brood box or whatever before they fill the very outside frames that are right next to the window that you can see and you're like oh they're empty what are they doing when in the middle it's completely full and capped over and mm -hmm. beautiful. And I'll, I'll show you a video, too, of... Let me make sure it's right. Oh, it's upside down. I'm glad I didn't. 
I didn't do that. Awesome. Um, oh, you're welcome, Woods Friendly Garden. We we like watching your videos too, so it's exciting. All right, so I'm going to put and, this video on, and this is how you actually oh there we go extract. So that's the key. Um, it's just a long piece it, of metal. It's kind of like a ro a flattened rod. Yep. And but it's got that that L shape, so you can get that torque. And, and what I was saying earlier is sometimes you can turn it, and he was worried about breaking it. He's like, I don't know, but you see how the, the plastic comes up. Well, sometimes you turn that thing, and you, you turn it all the way, and then the plastic pops back down. So just go through a couple times, try and pop it, keep pushing that, that key in, pop it more, and then if you get no resistance by the time you get to the end, then you know you're good. Sometimes it will be like the first section is popped and then as you go back further There'll be one section that's just stubborn and doesn't want to doesn't want to pop but then the channels uh, You know separate just a little bit and all that honey can start flowing down and then through the tube The liquid golds. Yeah, look at that Oh, So pretty so. so you got one little bee hanging out checking it out going what's going on over here? Mm-hmm she can probably smell it, <laughs> yep. but can't quite get to it. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. Boop. So awesome. And then, yeah. and this is, this is what it looks like for the actual bees. The bees on the front of the hive are just hanging out. But then if you walk around to the back, boom, honey bears here taking all their honey. <laughs> Yeah. So. Just hanging out. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Well. I think that's it. I yeah. don't have anything else. I'm good. Yay! Are you guys good? Do anybody have any questions? Yeah. Just... Throw them in there. Yep. If we see them before we, we close out, we will absolutely answer them. And if we don't see it before we close out, we will still answer them. It may not be just quite as quick. <laughs> yeah. It will be it will be in the, uh, in the comments. Definitely be in likely. the comments. Yeah. But I want to say thank you to Al, Tall Cedars, Tommy, and Woods Friendly Garden for all the Yay. comments. Yes. And uh, Bees and Bikinis. Bees and Bikinis. Yeah. Let me scroll through. Say, Anybody don't, else don't I missed? Don't forget. Yeah. Al, Tommy... Uh, Henry. Oh, and Henry. Henry was number one. Yeah, first, first. one to comment. Awesome. <laughs> so, really yes. appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, again, uh, we are in North Carolina. We got the flow to work. Yep. And, uh, yeah. Uh, if you're wondering what the painter's tape is about, I just like whenever I, I crack the hives, I like to give them a, a chance before it starts raining sideways here. Yeah. Uh, now that you mention it, where would I place the flow hive frame in the hive when it arrives? So it is going to go in your super. Yep. So I would recommend if you have a frame of honey already pulled out or at least starting to get filled with nectar, putting that flow frame right next to it because then that's going to get the bees walking on that a little bit more and it's going to help dissipate that plastic smell and help get the bee smell on it and they'll probably take to it a little bit faster yeah honestly if you want it if if it's your first time doing it i would get the hybrid because then yeah. you can put the box on top of your your 10 frame right yep you said 10? Yep. so you said 10. 10 frame and then you'll have I think it's two frames on each side, yep. so four frames of your pulled out wax mm -hmm. um, can go up there, preferably your, not your, brood. Of your standard Langstroth frame, so like yep. the same kind of frames that you would have in your brood box, but yep. for a super. And then next to them in the middle is your flow frames. And four. It, it's four. four. Yeah, through, yeah, four for the 10 frame. Mm -hmm. um, and, then, and then your bees will be attracted to the frames that you already had pulled out, and then they'll walk over to the the flow frames and, and start getting in there. Just remember to wax it real good and uh, that will give you a, a real big boost to your first year having them. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Ho hopefully that answers your question. Yes. And yeah, like he said, hopefully that answers your question. If you have any more or we didn't quite expand on it enough for your liking, let us know and we will definitely get back to you. Yeah. For sure. And let us know what you think of this, uh, 
the streaming stuff, I got to give credit to the Swarmstead Bruce over there. I saw him doing it, and I was like, oh, I could do that. It's <laughs> it's not super complicated, but there's a lot of options here. There are. T- I'm looking at it, and I'm like, uh, nope. <laughs> he's like, he's over here like, click, 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 yeah, click. Yeah. Oh, oh, let me show you this, too. Click, click, click. I'm I like, can, uh, nope. <laughs> I can filter things, too. Oh, Okay. Well, you guys have a wonderful evening. Yes. Remember, healthy bees are happy bees. Thank you so much for joining us and for being so interactive. We really appreciate it. It makes this so much more enjoyable. Yep. So we're not just talking out of camera. Yep. <laughs>